Hey guys, Judy here with For Real Mommy, and I wanted to do a video today for you guys. I'm giving you my top five tips for IEPs, and more specifically for kids with FASDs, but this will kind of cover for um, all kids with all challenges and disabilities. It's kind of just a um, universal IEP tips. So I have my notes here. Um, number five, be prepared. So um, know your rights going going in. Um, visit rightslaw.com and I'll leave the link down below. Um, that is a website that um, is specifically about special education and special education laws. Um, and so it's really super helpful to know um, what your rights are, know what FAPE is, know what um, No Child Left Behind is, and um, understanding your child's disability is crucial. You need to know and understand um, your child specifically, but also the disability that your child has, their diagnosis, and really understand it so that when you're talking in the IEP that you um, seem like you are prepared and you are knowledgeable um, about your child's disability. Um, number four, come to the IEP with supporting evidence for what or why you are seeking services. So, um, you know, you may want to bring doctor's notes, you may want to bring um, recent test results, um, you may want to bring a video of your child if you are seeking more behavior support services, um, bring a video, bring notes from, um, or I said doctor's notes, um, and um, you need to be able to justify what you're asking um, with FAPE. So you need to be able to say that whatever you're asking for your child, whether it be speech therapy, behavioral therapy, occupational therapy, whatever, that um, what you're asking for is necessary for your child to receive a fair and appropriate public education because that's the law. And if you can justify your child's needs based on the law, you're going to get a lot farther than if you just come in and demand dolphin therapy for your child, um, you know, that maybe needs just a few extra minutes of speech a week. Um, so you really need to make sure that what you're asking for lines up with FAPE and shows evidence um, as to why your child does need more therapy. Um, Number three, kill them with kindness. Um, you need to establish a relationship with your IEP team, with the teacher, with the therapist, with the administrators from the school district, because you're gonna be working with these people and um, for quite a long time, um, depending if your child switches schools or districts or not, or you move. But essentially, this team, if you are killing them with kindness and really being assertive, but also being um, reasonable and kind, um, know the law, but also um, be willing to negotiate. And um, it just, you'll go a lot further in um, getting your child the services that they need if you come in and you are, um, you know, kind and on the defensive and not on the offensive. Um, bring cookies, bring a snack for them, bring something, um, you know, if, especially if it's like around lunchtime, you can bring a sandwich tray, you can bring, you know, things like that. I found that in doing stuff like that, it just kind of, it kind of shows that A, you're a concerned, involved parent, um, and B, you're not out to get everybody. You're not going to be going in there and, you know, um, coming in angry, coming in frustrated. They see those types of parents every single day. Not that you are not justified in feeling angry and frustrated and not that you don't want to throw the cookies at everybody during the IEP meeting, but you need to keep a level head. Um, number four, or number two. <laughs> Sorry, somebody's at my door, so my ring thing is going off. Number two, get rest. So if at all possible, the night before, make sure you get a really good night's sleep. Um, plan a treat for yourself. So maybe bring like, um, maybe stop at Starbucks on the way there or stop at Starbucks on the way afterwards. Do something that's just for yourself. Um, you need to kind of replenish yourself and keep yourself um, 
you know, just keep yourself energized, keep yourself focused, but also know that what you're doing is hard work and um, it's emotionally draining. Sometimes it's physically draining and, you know, you need to just be able to give yourself a treat afterwards. So, um, let's see, consider calling an advocate or an attorney, um, just so that you have that support. If you feel once you are done with the IEP that you are not going to get what you asked for and you feel justified in asking for that, call an advocate, call an attorney, um, look up NOFAS, N-O-F-A-S, that's the National Organization on Fetal Alcohol Syndrome. Oftentimes um, there will be um, different support groups for your state or for your county and you can look things up that way and um, there's a lot of information there including information I believe on um, different attorneys and things like that that are um, nonprofit and people that can help you for low cost or free. Um, let's see and then the number one number one piece of advice that I can give you guys is do not sign the IEP on the same day as the IEP. Don't sign it. You, when you get there, they will give you a sign-in sheet. You can sign that. Make sure it is only the sign-in sheet and not the agreement to the IEP itself. So really look at what you're signing. Um, take the IEP home. Take your old IEP and put them side by side and check to make sure that the minutes add up. Um, that if nothing is going to change, just make sure that they're not taking any services away, that they're not taking any minutes away. Um, make sure all of those things line up and that everything is correct. Um, they're not going to be upset that you want to take it home. Oftentimes they expect that. And just say at the, front, at the beginning of the IEP, I just want you guys to know that I never sign my IEPs on the same day. I'd like to take a copy home to look at it and I'll get it back to you. Um, that's what I do every time. I started that several years ago and I um, stick by it even when I get something that I really want. They're not going to rescind that offer. That offer of FAPE is always going to be there. Um, I mean, it's not going to be there forever, but you have time to go ahead and take your IEP home, look it over, call an attorney if you need to, call an advocate, do your research. Um, and then you can also choose to not sign it. You can choose to sign it with, um, you can write some notes in there um, because usually there's a box that checks. Um, I agree to this IEP except for, and then you can write that in there. Um, I would just suggest that, you know, you take your time to really look at it before you sign it. And that's about it. I think that's probably the most important piece of advice um, besides, you know, bringing something for yourself as a treat, doing before or afterwards, bring a pillow to scream into when you leave if you need to. I've been to IEPs where I have just left and felt just completely crushed and like nobody was going to get my kid. Nobody understands him. Nobody's going to ever give him the types of help and services that he needs. So, um, stick with it, be consistent, have a good support group, have a good support system at home. I know that's not always easy, but, um, reach out to support groups on Facebook. If you need to, there's a lot of great FASD support groups on Facebook as well. So, Anyways, I hope that helps guys and have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.